What's up guys, this is your boy Chris Reed Beats back with another video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make beats in Reason 12, but this video is gonna be more of a comprehensive guide. So it's really gonna show you the ins and outs of the software. Let's jump into it. When it comes to adding sounds inside of Reason, you're either gonna be using a VST plugin or one of Reason's built-in instruments, and you're gonna be using MIDI in order to generate sound from those instruments or you can use audio files directly from your computer that you drop into Reason Sequencer. You could also use loops or Rex files, which are included in Reason 12. So let's start off with adding some instruments. So there's a couple different ways that you can do things inside of Reason. There are always multiple ways for you to do them. If you're right here inside of your rack window, you have this option to click this button that says add device, and then you can go to add instruments so you can add the instrument that you want to use. The built-in instruments that you have added to your Reason library will be located under Reason Studios. The rest will be VSTs that you have installed onto your computer. So you can select the instrument that you want to use and then Reason will load it up in its rack. Another way that you can add an instrument is by holding control and pressing I, and then it will bring up the browser and then you will be able to choose from the different instruments that are installed on your computer. So we have the option of using Reason Studio instruments, but if we collapse this in our browser, we then can see the other VST options that we have. Of course, you also can choose to filter out what kind of instruments will show either VST2 or VST3. If you click all of the filters off, then the only instruments that will show will be Reason installed instruments. Let's get started with algorithm. By default, it will load in an instrument patch for that instrument, and then it will also open your browser so you can see all of the other patches that are available. If you wanna make sure that this feature is turned on, go to your preferences and select load default sound in new devices. So now we have an instrument loaded. Let's actually record something with that instrument. We're gonna make a trap beat for this first time around. So let's actually switch over to our sequencer by pressing F7. And I'm gonna show you guys a couple different ways that you can get this MIDI actually imported into the sequencer as well. So first we'll do it by playing on our MIDI keyboard. When you're making your beat, you wanna set your tempo. There's a couple ways that you can set your tempo. You can choose a set number that you want to set your tempo by, or you can use the tap in order to dial in the specific tempo you want based on how fast you are tapping this button. So that's our tempo that we are setting. And now we will hit pre so that we have that, or you also can hit control P. Control P will turn on your pre-click and pressing nine on the number pad is the shortcut to turn on the click for your metronome. Lastly, we hit the star on our number pad for record, or we can go to this button right here, this red button that represents our record. Let's quantize that by holding control and pressing K, and then we'll drag this arrow back so we tidy up our clip. Next, let's hit control D to duplicate that across. Let's add a little bit of variation with this melody by changing this note right here that repeats. Let's move it up. And we'll change it again here. Perfect. So that is one way that we can add an instrument and then create sounds inside of Reason. Another way that we can do it is just by simply using the piano roll. So let's actually go into our bass folder. We'll choose a bass and then we'll add in a clip by holding Alt or using our pencil tool. We can add in a clip here into the sequencer and then we can go into edit mode so we can find our piano roll. So now let's add in a bass line for this track. To draw out notes inside of our piano roll, we need to have the pencil tool activated. If you hold control while using your pencil tool, you can add in multiple notes like this. The amount of notes that will be drawn in is determined by your snap. Uh, so we could change our snap to get a different value of notes added in like so. So we're gonna draw in a clip right here for our baseline and we'll listen to it. Maybe another one. So 
So now we have a pattern with a base note. We just use a base note on C, but what we could do is duplicate that clip and then come in here and change this C to a different note. So let's change it down to a G and hear how that sounds. Cool. So let's create a little melody with this bass line here. So drawing in these notes, pretty simple. We'll make sure that all of the notes are on the same one, which is C. So now that we have these four bass line notes, let's actually move some of them around. So we'll start with C and move down to B flat. Then we'll go down to F and then we'll come back up to G sharp. So I heard something else right there at the end. So I just added in a note very quickly and you can add in notes while the music is playing for a shortcut for adding in notes. You just need to hold alt when you are using your pointer tool. If you hold alt, then you can switch to the pencil tool while you're holding alt. And when you let that go, it will go back to our pointer tool. If we want to delete notes, we can click and drag and then we can delete the notes that we don't want by clicking and dragging. And once they highlight, we just press delete. There's still one more way that you can get sound into reason. So let's go back to our algorithm folder and we'll choose another kind of sound. Maybe these keys, for example, we'll use these keys. And now I want to introduce to you something called players. So when you're using players inside of reason, they are mini note generators that allow you to generate MIDI notes. Let's use a player in order to generate chords using this patch. So there are many different players that you can choose from. One that is very helpful and very useful is scales and chords. So we'll go to scales and chords and we'll add it to our algorithm by dragging it to the top of the device and then letting go. And now we have scales and chords there. Well, I've been playing in C minor, so I'm going to set it to C minor. Then I'm going to turn on my octave up and my octave down. And we're also going to make this some open chords. So we have our player added in. And we already have some notes, some bass notes that we were using earlier. Let's just drag these bass notes down by holding control, clicking on this clip and dragging it down. And so now we will have chords being played instead of those bass notes. So let's say we don't necessarily like that patch. We can change and find different patches by using the arrow keys. I like those a lot better already. Let's hear that with the rest of the beat. The second way that I want to show you guys how to add sounds into your music is by using audio files. So there are a couple of different samples and audio files that are already included inside of Reason. I'm going to show you guys how you can get to some of those. We'll go to Drum Supply and then we can go to Noises and Effects, for example, and we can simply add in these audio files into our sequencer. So I like this swiped audio file. So we'll just drag this over and we can move this around inside of our sequencer however we like. Maybe it'd be better somewhere over here. Let's try it here. If I want to add in another audio file, I can do that as well by clicking and dragging and bringing it over. And you also can double click and it will add it into the sequencer as well. So as I double click here, it will add it into our sequencer. And then we can just move around in our sequencer where we want it to be. Let's take this audio file that we had. We're going to split it right here where the loop ends. And we're going to take the right side of it and we're going to add it to the beginning of the loop.
The third way that I want to show you guys how we can add sounds into Reason is by using loops. And inside of Reason, there is a library of Rex files that you can use inside of your music. So let's go to our loop supply folder. And here we can find Dr. Octorex patches as well as some other loops that are available. Let's go to our trap folder and maybe we can find some percussion or something that we can add in. Once I find one that I really like, I have a couple options to using them. One option I could do is to simply click and drag and drag it over and then it will create it as an audio file or I can use the create button and it will create it as a Rex player. So here's what that loop sounds like. The fourth way that I will show you guys how you can add sounds into Reason is by using an instrument like this guitar. By adding that into my audio interface, I can actually play this guitar into Reason. Now, here's a couple things you need to do to set that up. First, you need to go to Edit, Preferences. Make sure you have a driver that will receive your audio interface. So this is the driver that I'm using and it's the driver for my interface. You can see here there's two input channels and two output channels. So now I just need to connect my guitar to my audio interface and then I'll be able to play my guitar in Reason. To add my guitar into the Reason sequencer, I need to go to add track and create an audio track. And then I need to select the input that I'm using on my interface. This guitar is going into input number two. In order to hear my guitar, I need to enable monitoring for this track. If I need to tune my guitar, I can do that in the sequencer as well by clicking this enable tuner, then I can tune my guitar. To record the audio into Reason, I need to make sure that my track is record enabled, and then I need to press the record button. We can also do some editing to that audio that has been recorded in. We can do pitch editing. So we can go to our pitch editing lane and we can control A to select all of the notes or we can just choose individual notes. But we can hit control A or highlight all of the notes and then we can press correct. And that will do some pitch correction to some of the notes that may not have hit the mark right where they should have been. If we want our sound to have less wavering, we can turn down our drift, for example. So using one of these positions right here, we can turn our drift up and down. We can hear how that sounds. So that's with the drift at 100%. Let's turn our drift down. If we turn our drift down, our note is played much steadier and not with a lot of the inflection that I was playing inside of the guitar. So now I've showed you guys a couple ways that you can add sound into your Reason file. So now let's start adding in some effects so that we can shape our music a little differently. Let's add in some effects for this guitar. One way that you can add in effects is by clicking on the instrument that you want to add an effect to or the audio track, right clicking, going to effects, and then choosing the effect that you want to add in. Let's start by adding in a soft tube amp for this guitar. I think it sounds better already, uh, but we can add in some more effects. We can add in a compressor, for example. Let's add in a M-Class compressor. We'll turn up our input gain 
We'll drop down our threshold and we'll turn up our ratio, drop down our attack and gain up our release. I want to change the order of the signal flow for these effects. And so I can do that very easily by holding shift and dragging the effect where I want it to be in the signal flow. So now you can see that the audio is going into the compressor before it goes into the amp. So I'm hitting that compressor really hard. Let's drop our threshold down so we can let more of the audio through. So we also can quantize this audio file and we can move the slices of the audio file around so we can get a better sound because my playing wasn't that great. So like right there, that just kind of comes in kind of late or maybe too soon. So one thing I'm hearing that this guitar could really use is some reverb. So there's a couple ways that we can add reverb to this guitar. The first way that we could add reverb to this guitar is by using our send effects. In this file, I already have a reverb on the first send effect. So if I turn that ascend effect on by pressing the one and I can increase the level of that send effect as much as I would like it to. That's one way that we could do it. Here's another way we could do it by using parallel processing. I can create a parallel channel by right clicking in our mixer and going to create parallel channel. Now I have a parallel channel that duplicates the sound that's being played, but I still have access to the original sound and I can affect this parallel channel differently than how I affected the main channel. So I can add a reverb to my parallel track and then I can use my volume to dial in how much of that sound I want to hear. What if I only wanted that reverb to come out the left side? Then I can just use my parallel track. I can pan it to the left side. Now that reverb affected sound of that guitar will only be in the right side. Let's save this. I have a bad habit of not saving when I should. So let's go ahead and make sure we save this track to save the progress that we have so far. Well, well, all right, I just saved it to save what we have so far. Let's go to file. We're going to hit save as and then we're going to name this guy. So we'll name this lonely guitar. No, let's name this. Uh, so we'll name this guy rich and famous. I also like to include the key that I was making the beat in as well as the BPM. So we're at 140 BPMs and we save that guy just like that. There are many ways that you can program drums just like we programmed our earlier instruments. You can program drums inside of Reason as well. So of course you can play them with your MIDI keyboard. You can record them into your sequencer. You can use your piano roll or you can use players. To find some instruments that you can make drums with, let's use our browser and let's use the search function and we'll just type in drum. When we search drum in instruments, it pulls up the different instruments that we can use to create drums or they have the word drum inside of the title. Let's use Kong Drum Designer and this time we'll reset the device. And now I'll show you how you can add in drum sounds into the Kong Drum Designer. If you have drum kits that you really like to use, you can add those drum kits directly into Reason by finding them in your Explorer. And then you can click and drag and add them over to this column and it will drag that drum kick over to that column. So I have some drum samples here that I want to load up. So let's load up a kick. 
Here's our kick. Let's load up a snare and then let's load up another snare. And let's also load in a clap, some hi hats, open hi hats, crashes. So now that we have some drums loaded up, I want to use beat map in order to create a drum for this track. A beat map is another player. And to add that player to Kong, we can right click on Kong, go to players, and then we can add beat map. Of course, we also can go to players, find beat map and drag it over till it appears at the top of our Kong drum designer. Beat map has different maps that you can choose from that gives you different styles and flavors of drum loops. You can also change the density of each of the drums that are being played, the kick, snare, hat, and percussion. Let's choose the uncharted map and we'll start at the very beginning and we'll hear how that sounds. One problem that we have right now is our hat is actually playing a snare. So we can change the hat to a different sound by using this D1 or we can also use learn. So if we use the learn feature, we can press learn key. We could choose the one we wanted to learn. And we can press it on our MIDI keyboard to learn it. You also can just click and drag until you find the note value that you want it to be on. Now let's hear that with the beat that we've created so far. So now we need to actually mix the beat a little bit because we can't hear our drums inside of this file. They're just being overtaken by the rest of the instruments. So if we want to start applying some leveling, we can come into our mixer and then we can just kind of turn everything down by clicking and holding shift to select all of the tracks except for the drums. Then we can pull those tracks down. There's one thing that I'm hearing inside of the loop that we chose earlier. Our trap loop percussion has a lot of reverb in it. It just makes it like sound like it's in like this open room or something. Let's take a look at it. Let's actually add a gate to this channel so that we can cut out some of that reverb since it's just kind of distracting me to turn on a gate for this channel. I will go to the gate mode and turn it on. So I want this gate to activate very quickly. So I will turn on fast. And then I will adjust my threshold so I can get rid of that sound. I really only want the highest parts of that sound from that loop to be playing. So I'll adjust my range and threshold until I get that sound that I'm looking for. And for our release, if I want the gate to allow some more of that reverb to come in, then I will turn up the release. If I want it to sound more choppy, then I'll turn down the release. So let's tame this guitar section a little bit. We're going to go ahead in our mixer, we're going to highlight all of the guitar section, and then we're going to route to a new output bus. And then on this output bus, we're going to do some compression. OK, so we're going to turn on our compressor, we're going to turn on our peak and our fast, and then we're going to add in some of the ratio and pull down some of the threshold so that we can just tame those guitar sounds just a little bit. So that little indicator light is showing us that there is some gain reduction happening, but we want a little bit more gain reduction. At the same time, this compressor has some built in gain increase. So as we are using that compressor, it's going to try to level out the sound, not just squash the sound altogether, but it's going to level the sound out. We might need to increase the gain at the top. If we increase the gain, it will activate that compressor a little bit more. Now, I know that we added in a baseline for our track earlier, but I really feel like a 808 will give this track a little bit more energy. 
And so one thing that we can do inside of Reason and inside of our beat production is to actually sequence our beat out a little differently. So when it comes to sequencing, we can actually use this portion that we've created as an intro, and then we can drop out that bass and add in our 808 for our verse or chorus section. I like those drums and I wanna keep those drums. So I'm gonna to go to our beat map and select send to track. What that will do is generate the MIDI notes that the beat map player was creating. And now I have a clip inside of our sequencer that I can move around and I don't have to use that beat map in order to play those drums. So for our loop player, in order to get it into our sequencer and not just be playing from start to finish, there's a couple ways we can do that as well. So we can automate the selection of the loop player in order to get that into our sequencer. So now we have this pattern select lane. And if we use our pencil tool, we can select the pattern that we want. And wherever this one appears, it will play the loop. But where it doesn't appear, it won't play the loop. For example. And now we've created a little bit of transition happening with our beat. So we've created an intro section and we've created a verse section. Let's highlight all of the clips that appear in our intro section, right click, and then we'll do a different clip color so we can see, hey, that's all of our intro section that's playing right there. So we dropped out our guitar for our verse section, essentially, and we'll add in a different color. So now we can see the different parts of our track by using the coloring for the clips. We can see the different parts of our track. We have our intro, we have our hook, and we have our verse. Let's add in that 808 here. So now that we have that 808 added in, let's actually drop one of these notes. Let's move these notes around. So we hit control shift and press down to move one of these notes a complete octave down. So we can move that down from where it was and let's hear that back. Cool, so let's add in this rain effect and we'll duplicate it across so it fits in our full beat. And I think we need to turn the volume down some. Let's hear it. So we have a basic structure of our beat and now I'm hearing another melody line that I want to add into the beat. And this is going to be our top melody line that we're going to add into this beat. When it comes to mixing your beat, aim for clarity, not loudness. Pan certain instruments so that they have room to be expressed in your music. Level instruments so that they're not too loud. EQ your instruments so that they sound crisp and not muddy. Aim for clarity and not just volume. As you are mixing your beat, listen for those moments where something sounds too loud or out of place. You might need to add some compression to that instrument. As you are listening to your beat, you should get to a point in your mix where you're no longer reaching to turn something up or turn something down. Once you can listen to your beat without needing to add any further adjustments, I would say you've reached a good mix and a good leveling. Listen for harsh frequencies by doing sweep and cuts. If you find a harsh frequency, dial some of that frequency down using your EQ. 
as we were making this production, we covered such things as parallel compression, compression, EQing, leveling, busing, grouping. So all of these things can be used in your final mix as well. The master section is where you can add that final polish to your beat. As you are mixing, trust your ears, but also trust your eyes. Make sure that you're checking your meters and that nothing is clipping or peaking. You will know that your music is clipping if this indicator lights up. Also, you can use a loudness meter like this one from Ulean in order for you to gauge just how loud your music really is. Once you have a good mix on your beat, now it's time to export. First thing you need to do is make sure the end indicator, which is this E bar right here, make sure that is lined up somewhere to the ending of your track. After that, go to file and hit export song as audio file. Choose a location for you to export your file to and hit save. Once you have your export settings dialed in how you like it, go ahead and press OK. And Reason will export your track. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. My name is Chris Reed, and until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.